Hey guys, I've got a really interesting and fun puzzle for you. It's white to play and win. Black's pawns are going down the board in this direction. Before I say anything else, if you'd like to pause and try to find the winning move for white, go ahead and do that, and then we'll talk about the solution. All right, so if you had a chance to look at that, obviously the big problem for white, despite the fact that we have two rooks, is that black's pawn down here is about to become a queen and there's too many pawns in our way unfortunately we can't you know take this pawn and try to take it because there's another pawn blocking us so we have to figure out how to prevent this but another problem is that the rook over here is blocked by our king and so it seems pretty hopeless at first glance for white but there is an absolutely amazing idea uh, hidden in this position. So the first move that you need to play and the only winning move for white is rook g to b8 check. And there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, we're forcing the king to make a decision. Black either has to go to the a file or to the c file. And it, first of all, the a file doesn't really give us too many problems. So let's start with that one. Let's just say they play a move like king to a5, thinking that they're getting at, away from the checks and they're nice and safe over here. We can't come down here or they take us. They're getting ready to get a queen. What are we gonna do, right? Well, we simply take the pawn. And if they get the queen, we simply take this pawn. And we are essentially forcing black to take us. This is almost checkmate, they have to take us. But now they've stepped into what's called a skewer. A skewer is when you force a high value piece to move out of the way and you take another piece behind it. So we've skewered the queen here. And after the king moves somewhere, we simply take the queen. This is a winning endgame for white. You just have to know how to checkmate with the rook and the king. So because of that, any move to the A file is going to be the exact same outcome. We're going to take the pawn, and then the next move we take this pawn, and then we have a skewer. It doesn't really matter. This is the best case for black. So they have to move to the C file. And the idea is mostly the same, but king to c3 is black's best chance, trying to stay relatively close to the pawn. So they move king to c3. What do you think we should play next? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook to c8 check. Because, I mean, we can't come down here. We just get captured. We can't take here. They just get a queen. But we can throw in this check. And you might be saying, well, what does that accomplish if black just, let's just say, goes to b2, goes back to the b file? Well, now we can bring this rook over. Rook a to b8 check. And this forces black to make a tough decision. You don't want to block your pawn and get checkmated. Oops, sorry. I didn't want to go there. Get checkmated. Um, and so you probably would go here, but then you fall to this rook to c3 check the king has to move And then we simply come down here. We're safely stopping the pawn and Black's gonna get made in a few moves uh, It's mate in five a5 rook to a1 king goes here And the, the coolest way to actually checkmate black is to just wait until they push this pawn And then you zip the rook over here and you deliver the checkmate like this. That's kind of a, a fun one, right? Um, so okay, so we can see that Moving back to the B file, after we throw in this check, moving back to the B file doesn't work. We're always gonna have that idea, regardless of where black goes, once their king gets pushed to the A file, it's not going to be good. However, black can just keep running this way. And notice how by going to D2, they've taken away the square where our rook would like to go to. We'd like to come down here to stop the pawn, but we can't, or we just lose our rook, right? So what are we gonna do? Well, you might see the pattern here. We can play rook to d8 check. And if they go back, we have the same idea. This other rook comes over. And then when they go back, our rook comes down. And then eventually, when they come up, we come down here and we stop the pawn. Okay, and we get the other rook down. We make this blockade and, and then we win. We can bring our king over to help. And it's, it's a pretty easy win. So because of that, black has to keep going. So they go king to e2. And we play, surprise, surprise. Rook to e8 check, and they keep going. And now is the moment in the puzzle that makes it truly fascinating. There's a move here, uh, which if you would like to try to find it, go ahead. Um, but when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. But it's white to play and win. What's the move for white? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, you might be tempted to say, well, we just keep checking. We just go rook f8 check. I mean, that's what we've been doing this whole time, right? And we just keep going. That's not the right answer. And before I show you what the correct move is, I'll show you why this doesn't work. So if you keep going and you allow the king to get on the g file, notice how our king is stopping any further checks here. This is not what we want, okay? This is not good. And now black is going to get the queen and we can't really do anything about it. 
Okay, so uh, that's kind of the problem there. Once black gets the queen, it's we can actually get a draw using our rooks cleverly, but it's we're not going to win. Okay, so let's go back. The winning move for white here is the mind-boggling rook to e1. And yes, the king can just take the rook for free. What are we doing? Why are we giving away our rook for free? Here's the amazing idea. If the king takes, I mean, the king has to take the rook. Because if you don't take it, we're going to come over here with our rook next to take the pawn. So the king has to take. Now, do you want to pause again? What do we play now? If you had a chance to look at that, rook to h8. And we are setting up a skewer again from a different direction if black gets the queen. We're coming down here with check. King's got to move. And we're taking the queen. We're taking the pawns. And we're winning. Okay? So... That's pretty clever, but black doesn't have to take it, right? They might just try to move their king back over this way. So what are we going to do? After king to d1, we have another really nice move. What is it? If you had a chance to look at that, it's rook to h2. And we're just going to take the pawn. And if black, you know, doesn't move it, we take it. And if they move it, well, we've seen this before. Again, we get the skewer, we win, and then we go take these pawns and we win. And there's actually nothing that black can do about it. And so this is a totally winning position and it had to do with the fact that we had to lure black's king to the first rank that was the whole point of giving up our rook we had to lure the king there because without the king being on the first rank this idea doesn't work right you imagine if we tried to just go immediately with this rook over here it doesn't work because black just gets a queen we don't have a skewer here if we put him in check they're just going to run this way or this way something like this so fascinating position um, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this and um, really nice way to finish off the game. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. It's a pretty easy position to remember if you want to show this one to your friends or family or someone just kind of show off. Uh, not very many people are going to be able to see that, obviously, and so you can have fun with this one. But I'll see you guys next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.